Hi dear learners, welcome to APCC LMS portal. This is Dr. Y. Polinaidu, LMS presenter, lecturer in zoology from Government Degree College, Men's Rikakulam. Today I am going to talk about one of the most uh, important uh, crucial cell organelle uh, that is from 2nd BSc zoology 3rd semester cell biology topic nucleus, its structure and functions. I would like to divide the content into six parts like objectives, introduction, research history, structure of nucleus, functions of nucleus and summary. Let me first explain about objectives. After listening to this lecture, a student can able to know the research history of nucleus, able to describe the structure of nucleus and he or she can know the internal structures of nucleus and their functions to understand the function of nucleus that controls all the cell organelle activities. Here our living creatures are described into two different types. Those with circular DNA and plasmids, this is known as nucleoid, are called prokaryotes and one with a definite nucleus means nuclear membrane around uh, linear DNA and uh, membranous cell organelles are named as eukaryotic cells. You can view the image here, one is bacterium and another one is eukaryotic mammalian cell. Let me introduce about uh, eukaryotic nucleus. Nucleus means kernel or seed in Latin. It is also known as carrion. The study of nucleus is called karyology. It is the largest cell organelle in animal cells, whereas in plants, plastids are largest. It is a site of chromatin. By having all the genes, it can control the metabolic activities that are going to take place in each and every cell organelle. So, it is the control center of the cell. If you look at physical features like number, size, shape, first we will discuss about number. Generally, a cell has one nucleus, that condition is called a uninucleate. Sometimes paramecium and oat cell like protozoans may have two nucleus, means two nuclei. This condition is called a binucleate. Sometimes some cells like osteoclasts, striped mosofibers and opalina may have more than two nuclei and, this, and that condition is called syncytium. Actually, this syncytium word is used for animal cells and xenocytic the term used for plant cells and if cells are divided of nucleus that's that condition is called a nucleate and for this mammalian matured rbc and platelets are example if you look at the shape generally the cell shape varied uh, based on its uh, structure and function see the common shape of nucleus is spherical but in smooth muscles, it may be oval and uh, the granulocytes like acidophils is bilobed, basophils it is trilobed. You can see the diagram here and uh, multilobed in neutrophils. In paramecium, as the image shows, the large nucleus is horseshoe shape. Then come to position. In cell, the nucleus position mostly centric at the center of the cell. As you can see in uh, at cleavage, the embryonic cell shows centric nucleus. Generally, it is there in animal cells. Most of the animal cells show centric nucleus. But in plant cells, due to presence of vacuoles, it may be eccentric because the uh, nucleus put aside, like in uh, adipocytes, it may be peripheral. And in columnar and gland cells, sometimes it is very nearer to the membrane, plasma membrane, so it is bachelor in position. If you look at the size, it is also vary. You can observe from 0 0.5 to 600 microns in diameter. See, mammalian nucleus, 6 microns 
and uh, it can uh, occupy nearly 10% of the cell volume. The size of the nucleus is depends on, according to Hartwig, the nucleus size is directly proportional to the amount of cytoplasm that is there in the cell. And according to Baveri, the size of the nucleus is depends on the amount of chromosomes that are present inside the nucleus. Let me discuss about history of nucleus, the research contributions by different scientists on nucleus. This crucial cell organelle first described and named by Robert Brown in his orchid flower studies in 1831. He named it as a aureola or nucleus. In 1838, Matthias Slyden proposed that there is a role for nucleus in generating cells and he named as cytoblast or cell builder. In 1839, Hatwig reported the presence of nuclear membrane in the cell and in 1852, Robert Remarque and uh, in 1855, Virchow proposed omnicellular e cellula means all cells are existing from pre-existing cells for this nucleus is the reason. And in 1882, Walter Fleming on his uh, experiments on uh, salamander while he is doing mitosis experiment, he proposed that nucleus acts as a carrier of genetic information. And in 1953, Hammerling also proved the role of nucleus in heredity, growth and morphology by grafting experiments on estabularia. Let me explain about the nucleus structure. You can see the parts of nucleus like nuclear envelope, nuclear pores, nucleoplasm, nucleolus, chromatin. These are the important structures that are present and they perform variety of roles for controlling all the cellular activities. We will discuss about each and every part. First, nuclear envelope. It is a double membrane structure. Each membrane resembles plasma membrane in its chemical composition. It is also known as karyotheca and measures about 70 to 80 angstrom units. It is the source of all other uh, cell organelle membranes and it is continuous with RER. Mostly the outer nuclear membrane is continuous with the RER and has ribosomes. So it has the ability to produce proteins. The space in between two nuclear membranes is called perinuclear space. It measures about 10 to 50 nanometers. It continues with the rough endoplasmic reticulum lumen. And the chemical composition of nuclear membrane is like uh, it is made up of 59 to 75 percent proteins. And it carries nearly 20 proteins and uh, including ATPase, an important enzyme. And the lipid content may be varies from 17 to 35 percent. If you look at the proteins, that present on the nuclear envelope, it is named as karyoferins, they mediate transport of proteins, ribosomal subunits and DNA. Those which imports into the nucleus are important and which exports from the nucleus are called exportins. Some karyoferins serves as receptors for signaling molecules, hormones and enzymes. You can see the diagram here how the nuclear envelope shows its continuity with endoplasmic reticulum and that surrounds around the karyoplasm. And the nuclear pores we are uh, going to discuss now where the external and internal means outer and inner nuclear membrane joins there there is a pore like structure called nuclear pore nearly 3000 to 10000 nuclear pores are present per cell but a typical mammalian cell has 3000 to 4000 it is also known as annulus ring like structures generally octagonal in shape sometimes uh, it may be hexagonal in estabularia and uh, the pore complex means the proteins that are present around the pore are called pore complex they act as aqueous channels they are composed of multiple proteins called nucleoporins and around uh, 50 
rate of proteins are there in yeast and several hundred proteins are there in the nuclear pore complex in vertebrates. As you can see the diameter of a nuclear pore it measures about 100 nanometers but the central pore that has a widened nearly about 9 nanometers due to the presence of regulatory systems and those proteins are called nucleoplasmins sometimes. And if you look at the outer structure of the nuclear pore, pore uh, these pores are enclosed by circular structures called annuli, singular word annulus. These are first observed by Callan and Tomlin in uh, 1951. As you can see the diagram, the three ring like structures at cytoplasmic area and the nucleoplasmic area and a luminal ring. And you can, uh, uh, you can observe uh, a nuclear basket and a terminal ring in nucleoplasm and the cytoplasmic filaments and the cytoplasmic particles in cytoplasmic region. This is a complex structure of nuclear pore. It has an eightfold symmetric annular ring attached to the ring nuclear basket and series of filament extensions you can observe. These are helpful for selectively permeability and it controls the movement of larger protein molecules into the nucleoplasm. Let me explain about the nucleoplasm which is also known as karyoplasm. It shows resemblance uh, in its chemical composition with cytoplasm. It is an assembly of transcriptional factors and RNAs. It shows a variety of enzymes that are needed for DNA replication like helicase, gyrase, topoisomerases, DNA polymerases and the DNA repair complexes. Activators like magnesium, manganese ions are there within the nucleoplasm. Nearly the pH measures about 7.4 to 7.6. The other subnuclear bodies are present in nucleoplasm are mobile particles that are involved in RNA processing and transcriptional regulation and uh, programmed cell death called apoptosis. Those bodies are casual bodies, gems, rafa, PTF domains and PML nuclear bodies, splicing speckles and clastrosomes. You can observe the cytoplasm in this diagram. It has all these structures within it. And let me explain one of the structures in the nucleoplasm. Those are observed by Harris and James in 1952 and they described in amoeba. These are the fibrous intermediate filament like structures helpful for the mechanical and structural support of the nucleus. Their well organized meshwork acts as an anchoring site for chromosomes and nuclear pores within the nucleoplasm and these lamines are composed of lamine proteins that are synthesized in cytoplasm and later transported to the nucleus. These lamines generally emerin and nesprin bind to the cytoskeleton to provide structural support. You, you can see the diagram here how it acts as a nucleoskeleton. The lamin filaments you can find in the diagram. These lamin filaments can be assembled or disassembled in a dynamic manner. If mutations occur to these lamin genes leading to rare genetic disorders known as laminopathies, for example progeria which is a premature aging disorder. Let us all discuss about a nucleolus, a very important structure in nucleus, which is first observed by Fontana in 1781 in skin cells of an eel. The term nucleolus was given by Bowman. Nucleolus may be absent in cells like blastomia, sperm cells and reticulocytes. These are looking like a large dark spot that are surrounded by chromatin fibers. Sometimes uh, these chromatin fibers may be looks like a membrane but it is not a membrane, the nucleolus is surrounded by chromatin fibers. Generally, a cell has a single nucleolus, but sometimes some cells may have four, one to four nucleoli. The nucleoli number is fixed within each species. For example, in liver cells and lymphocytes, they may have two nucleolus per cell, but in polyploids and insects, some cells may have more than two nucleoli. At the time of cell division, in prophase, this nucleolus along with the nuclear membrane disappears. 
and it reappears during nuclear reorganization. In recent studies, scientists said that nucleolus has a relation with cellular aging, it means the senescence of an organism. If you look at the altered structure of nucleolus, generally you can observe a secondary construction on chromosome which lead to form uh, nuclear organized regions, NO regions. It is uh, made up of nearly uh, chromosome regions that has genes for 5.8s, 18s and 28s ribosomal RNAs. It contains relatively little chromosomal DNA but ribonucleoproteins are more. These chromosomes which have NO regions means secondary constructions are known as sat chromosomes. The human chromosomes number like 13, 14, 15, 21, 22 are example for presence of this secondary construction. It contains uh, several hundred copies of ribosomal RNAs. If you observe closely the nuclear structure in this diagram, there are three components, fibrillar component, dense fibrillar component and a granular component. All these are busy in synthesizing ribosomes and stores or RNAs. If you look at the main part of nucleus, the reason for it controls all the metabolic activity is none other than chromatin. During interphase in a cell, you can observe chromatin, a thin thread like fibers which are condensed to form chromosomes during division phase, M phase. The term chromatin was coined by Walter Fleming. This chromatin may be sometimes uh, uh, two different types like heterochromatin and euchromatin. Heterochromatin is a more compact form. When you apply fuel gen stains, it can absorb more color because it shows a non-transcribing genes. So these are also called as late replicating regions. Adenine thymine content is high in this heterochromatin region. Sometimes it may be facultative, may act to and constitute sometimes. You can observe uh, bar bodies that are present in human female. And when you come to a uh, euchromatin, it is less compact, thin fibrous DNA it contains. So it is known as early replicating area and genes are rich in this area. All are uh, transcribing and one in and cytosine nucleotide content is high. So, that chromosome was first observed by Hofmeister in 1848, but the term was coined by Waldeyer in 1888. Generally, a chromosome has parts like a chromatid, centromere, telomere, and a secondary construction. As you can see in the diagram here, chromatin contains DNA that is an hereditary material. It has an information and instructions for cell growth, development and reproduction. So, these chromosomes are carriers of information from one generation to another generation. Now, we are going to discuss about the functions of nucleus. It regulates all cell activities as we earlier said. It has a genetic information. You can remember the central dogma of molecular biology here proposed by Crick. It maintains law and order by showing all these uh, processes like replication, transcription, translation. The nucleus is a site of transcription and it controls gene expression. It is the storage of hereditary material in the form of DNA. And you can see multiple functions of nucleus like in nucleus chromatin is condensed form chromosomes at the time of cell division and nucleus can store proteins and our RNAs, tRNAs and mRNAs and uh, it acts as an as selective transportation membrane and allows movement of molecules selectively from nucleoplasm to cytoplasm and vice versa and uh, it is also responsible for cell division and production of ribosomes means Nucleolus plays a key role here and it is also responsible for growth and differentiation of cells. 
these are the functions of nucleus and we come to last part summary till now we discussed about the physical aspects and the research history of nucleus and the structure of nucleus and its different parts all these are described in detail and we explain the functions of nucleus how the nucleus controls all the cellular and metabolic activities that are going to take place in each and every other cell organelle thank you